Hi folks, if you've been wrestling with this huge issue of wearing face masks and gloves, the pros, the cons, what kinds are best, are they safe, how do you get rid of them safely, etc., this video is for you. We're continuing the series on questioning COVID. We're going to get started in the section on prevention that you'll find in the Ultimate Herbal Database. We're going to be using the Ultimate Herbal Database to go through this topic together, so let's get started. In the middle of the screen, you see the topic for prevention. Underneath are all kinds of things that we can use to prevent ourselves from getting sick. And at the very bottom, there's a scroll bar. Now you could use the search box over here on the bottom left to look up face masks for COVID. But we're just going to use the scroll bar to quickly move over to the right. And here we are on the right hand side. Just click on it. And now we're going to open up the info panel using that little arrow. And remember, you can open this up all the way and I think we'll do that. So now we've got tabs on the top. They're like browser tabs and you'll find several videos here. The notes section is what we're going to go into today. Beginning with the pros, a lot's been learned over these last few months about the effect of wearing face masks. Now you may recall way back when we were told that we wear them to protect others just in case we're carriers. But now we've learned that they also protect us. You probably already know that these masks do not prevent all of the virus from entering the body. What it's about is something called viral load. It turns out that the more virus we take into our bodies, the more likely we are to become very ill. Fewer viruses entering, we may be asymptomatic or have very, very mild symptoms. This first article is from a study that you can read by clicking on the link. And one of the things that it points out is that masks, depending on the type, filter out the majority of viral particles, but not all. And in this study, they discuss the literature around viral inoculum and severity of disease, conceptualized as the LD50 or lethal dose. And if you want to read about that, you can just click on that link up here. At any rate, they include in this study examples of rising rates of asymptomatic infection when the population is masked, including in closed settings like cruise ships with and without universal masking. Asymptomatic infections may be harmful for spread, but could actually be beneficial if they lead to higher rates of exposure. Exposing society to SARS-CoV-2 without the unacceptable consequences of severe illness with public masking could lead to greater community level immunity and slower spread as we await a vaccine. We'll get into vaccines later. This theory of viral inoculum and mild or asymptomatic disease with SARS-CoV-2 in light of population level masking has received little attention. So this is one of the first perspectives to discuss the evidence supporting this theory. Let's move down a little bit. Now, there are reports coming from around the country. For example, there was a pediatric hemodialysis unit in Indiana where all patients and staff were masked, demonstrated that staff rapidly developed antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 after exposure to a single symptomatic patient with COVID-19. In the setting of masking, however, none of the new infections was symptomatic. And then there was a recent outbreak in a seafood processing plant in Oregon where all workers were issued masks each day at work. And there is a rate of asymptomatic infection among the 124 infected was 95%. An outbreak in a Tyson chicken plant in Arkansas with masking also showed a 95% asymptomatic rate of infection. So just because you test positive doesn't mean you're going to get really ill. Also, a mask buys you time. After the first exposure to a virus, it takes the body a couple of weeks to develop antibodies, but a much faster response occurs after the second exposure. If the initial dose of inoculum is low, the body has time to mount an effect. But if it's high, it overwhelms the immune system response 
and illness is much more severe. So, in COVID-19, a low dose could even be considered a therapeutic dose because it can create immunity while having few, if any, symptoms. Before we move on, please let me know in the comments section where you stand. Mask wearing, a good idea or a bad idea? There are legitimate, valid reasons on both sides. If you want to be effective in persuading somebody who strongly disagrees with you, here's a little advice. There's something called the harm reduction model in medicine. It came out of working with people who had addictions, and it refers to a whole range of public health policies designed to lessen negative social and or physical consequences associated with different human behaviors. What it boils down to is you don't shame or yell at people to get them to do what you think is best for them. Instead, it works a lot better to offer loving, kind education and then leave it up to the individual to act based on having enough information to make a decision. While the predominant messaging is that everyone needs to wear a mask in order to stop the spread of COVID, epidemiological studies have shown us that only 80% of the population needs to wear a mask. 20% of the population doesn't have to. The best presentation I've seen so far for the benefits of wearing masks comes from this video, an interview with Dr. Monica Gandhi. When I see an excellent video, I often will take notes, especially if it's long, because I know a lot of you guys can't watch long videos, and so I try to get the main points from the video into the database, and that's what you'll find here. I'm not gonna go through it. Come to the database, and you can watch the video or just read through all of this. CDC recommendations that face masks have the following features, a snug fit that sits comfortably against the face and doesn't gap on the sides, two or more layers of fabric, allows for breathing without restriction, has the ability to be laundered and machine dried without damage or change, to shape. And then we have some more videos and articles in this section, like who should wear a mask. Now let's move on to the reasons not to wear a mask. First of all, cloth masks should not be worn by children under age two or anyone who has trouble breathing or is unconscious, incapacitated, or otherwise unable to remove the mask without assistance. If an individual has advanced lung disease, for example, someone who's already on supplemental oxygen at home, especially if they're also considered somebody who retains carbon dioxide, that's probably the highest risk group to put a mask on them and have them breathe through it for any period of time. And there are other physiological reasons. For example, people with neurodevelopmental disorders like autism, they can experience intense anxiety when forced to wear a mask. In this video, Dr. Blaylock talks about serious risks to the healthy from wearing face masks. This article talks about how there can be depletion of oxygen and increased carbon dioxide. That combination can elicit fear and anxiety, so folks who have issues with that may not be able to wear them. And Sweden's top epidemiologist is refusing to recommend face masks. He says they're very dangerous, and that's because they can give people a false sense of security. They can be a complement to other things when other things are safely in place. But to start with having face masks and then thinking you can crowd your buses and your shopping malls, that's a mistake. And then, of course, early on, the World Health Organization admitted that there wasn't any direct evidence that masks prevent viral infection. We've kind of already gone through that. Now, this article comes at it from another angle, which is very interesting. Face masks make you stupid. Face masks make you suggestible. They make you more likely to follow someone else's direction and do things you wouldn't otherwise do. They can be added to the list of mandates that make you stupid. As if Piers Morgan feverishly promoting them weren't evidence enough, here are the facts on why you absolutely categorically should not wear a face mask. They make you suggestible. They make you more likely 
to follow someone else's direction and do things you wouldn't otherwise do. In short, they switch off your executive function, your conscience. A great example comes from a study by Maths and Guest in 1976 who asked participants how willing they were and how much they would have to be paid to carry a sign around the university cafeteria reading masturbation is fun. This being 1976, doing such a thing would be considered embarrassing. These days, it would probably earn you a course credit. The results showed that when people wore a mask, they were more likely to carry the sign and required less money to do so. This article goes on to give other examples of how wearing a mask can affect us psychologically. Much of the argument against wearing masks has to do with our oxygen levels. There are some articles and videos here about that. One in particular that you might want to look at testing oxygen levels under a mask with an OSHA air quality monitor. OSHA requires 19% oxygen levels for workers. Normal levels should be 20 to 21%. After putting on a mask, the monitor registered 174 and sounded an alarm. And of course, we all know about the misinformation that's been fed to us about masks, a video about that. Face masks aside, the old rules still applied. If you're sick, stay home. Wear a surgical mask around other people. N95 respirators are fairly uncomfortable, worn for extended periods of time, and should be reserved for health officials. For the average member of the public walking down a street, wearing a mask is not a good idea. And then we have a review of the science relevant to COVID-19 social policy. Some miscellaneous things you might want to look at, especially oxygen boosting while wearing a mask. We should know that if you're wearing a mask all day, that could have a negative impact on your skin, mechanically by causing pressure, microbe and heat. It can restrict blood flow and lymph flow. Biologically, by creating a hot, damp environment, that might increase oil production and intensify microbial activity on the skin and have an impact on the function of blood vessels, interfering with normal blood supply, and then chemically, depending on the type of mask. Cloth masks from the holistic skin care perspective, you should look at whether they're organic, non-dried silk fabric, as that is the most complementary to human skin and non-toxic. And then here's some information on how to help your skin. If you are wearing a mask a lot at work, don't wear makeup, adjust your skincare routine, consider using an oil cleanser like jojoba oil, don't exfoliate, and then there's some herbs that can help with red irritated skin. Okay, mask and glove use and care. In this section, this is important, how to wear a non-medical fabric mask safely. Clean your hands before touching the mask. Inspect it to see if it's damaged or dirty. Adjust it to your face without leaving gaps. Cover your mouth, nose, and chin. By the way, there's another article in here about how beards can prevent masks from being effective. Avoid touching the mask. Clean your hands before removing it. Remove it by using the straps behind the ears or head. Then pull it away from your face. Store the mask in a clean plastic resealable bag if it isn't dirty or wet and you plan to reuse it. When you take it out of the bag, take it out using the straps. Wash it in soap or detergent, preferably hot water or at least once a day, and clean your hands after removing the mask. And then we've got some don'ts. Don't use it if it looks damaged. Don't wear it loosely. Don't wear it under your nose and don't remove it when people are within one meter. If it's difficult to breathe through, don't use it. Don't wear a dirty or wet mask and don't share it with others. There are several videos here on how to use masks and gloves. I'm going to show you this video, the do's and don'ts of wearing masks and gloves. Experiment where we show how easy it is to spread germs. We're going to demonstrate this using a powder that glows underneath a black light. As you can see, the only item in our experiment that has been contaminated with powder is the water bottle. In this experiment, the powder represents our bacteria, our germs, and viruses. 
So we can demonstrate how easy it is to spread this, even if we're running into the grocery store with proper PPE and protective equipment and grabbing one item. Okay, I have placed my protective equipment on correctly, and now I'm gonna run in and buy some water at the grocery store. So here's my water. I'm going to take my pin and pay for it. I got my receipt. Sign for that. Thank you. I'm going to open this up. Get a drink. I've been shopping. Okay. Spread this out. Okay. So now I've gone out to my car and I am ready to take off my mask and gloves. And I want to show you how important it is that we do this in the right order in the right way. So let's see how I did. I'm going to turn on my black light here. Oh my goodness. So starting off, we knew it was on the one surface. Look at my gloves, my mask right here on the outside of my gloves. The receipt, oh my goodness, look at this pen. The poor person who uses this pen after me. Oh, and look at my hands. Oh my goodness, the worst part about this is when I remove my mask, I did not use the proper procedure, which means that that must be on my face too. COVID-19 spreads through getting in your nose and in your mouth. And now this is really close to my nose. But it doesn't have to be that way. I've been a nurse for 14 years, and I'd like to give you some tips and tricks for how to put on your personal protective equipment and take it off safely so that you don't have to be afraid to go to the grocery store. So let's talk about the cloth masks. It all starts with our hand hygiene. It's always all about hand hygiene. Either our alcohol foam, hand sanitizer, our good old soap and water. So we want to clean our hands before we put the mask on. Hand hygiene is the number one way to prevent the spread of any infection. And that's true with COVID as well. So you want to let your hands dry if you've used hand sanitizer. And then you're going to start with your mask by holding it on the ear loops. And you're going to loop one ear first. And then wrap around to the other ear. And you want to make sure that the mask actually covers your nose and your chin and your mouth. If you have a metal piece in your nose, you want to make sure that it seals over the bridge of your nose. Those of you who wear glasses, this will also help prevent your glasses from getting foggy. You want to make sure that there's as good of a seal as possible around the edges of your face and underneath your chin so that nothing is getting up underneath there. Now let's talk about gloves. Since I haven't touched any other surfaces besides my mask, I don't need to wash my hands. But had I needed to touch something in between putting on my mask and my gloves, I would want to hand sanitize again. Now we can go about our business. All right, we are done with our shopping and now we're getting ready to take off our personal protective equipment safely. So the very first thing you wanna do is take off your gloves. These are dirty, so anything on my glove is dirty. So I wanna keep Glove to glove, when I take off the first glove, I'm pinching it here, and I'm gonna pull this off inside out and drop it into the trash. My hand is clean because I cleaned my hands and did proper hand hygiene before putting my gloves on. So I'm gonna skin to skin, put my fingers inside the glove on my skin, pulling these inside out as I go through, and then just dropping the rest of the glove inside the trash. Next, guess what? Hand hygiene. I'm going to use some alcohol to clean my hands before I touch my face. So I've been out in public, and this has all been exposed to the public. So I want to start with one ear loop with my clean hands and remove one ear loop and the other ear loop with my other hand. And I'm going to drop this in the trash or in a safe place. If you have a cloth mask and gloves, you can throw these immediately into the washer on the highest heat setting when you get home. These can also be dried in the dryer on the highest setting. 
Just keep in mind that the elastic might wear out over time. Or you can air dry them. You just want to make sure that they are completely dry before you use them again. After removing your gloves either into the trash or into the washer, next, guess what? We have hand hygiene. I'm using some alcohol foam here, but if you're at home, soap and water lathering up for 20 seconds is best. Now you know all our tips and tricks. Your safety is in your hands. Thank you for doing your part. In my opinion, in terms of the public effort to slow and stop the spread of COVID, there's a huge missing piece of the puzzle, and that's disposal of all of this medical waste. The masks, the gloves, what's happening with those? I've heard about them being just littering all over streets and on the beaches, etc. I've never seen any kind of public waste disposal marked for these things. And here's a horror story. A friend of mine was in a hospital parking lot waiting for someone. There was a tent outside the hospital for testing of COVID. The nurses from the tent left and they were wearing their full PPE gear after treating people in the tent or testing them. In front of the hospital entrance, there was a big public trash can. The nurses stopped before that, took off all their gear, and then just dumped it straight into the public trash can. Then they just turned and walked right into the hospital. So what are we supposed to do with it? For people who aren't sick and are just worrying it for protective measures, you place the gloves and mask inside a sealed bag and leave it for 24 hours. Then you just throw it in with your ordinary kitchen waste. If you have a fever or some symptoms that are suspicious, you do the same thing except first you spray it all down with a disinfectant. If you have been diagnosed with COVID, then you treat it as medical waste. And that's what these nurses at the hospital should have been doing. And this is a procedure that isn't that difficult. It's a little tedious, but here's what you do. You wash your hands, avoid touching the nose and mouth part of the medical mask, as you saw in the previous video. Disinfect it by spraying it with alcohol or some other disinfectant. Fold it at least three times with the part that touches the mouth and nose facing inwards. Wrap it in plastic, paper, or tissue. Put it in a tightly closed container, preferably red, because that's the color code for medical waste, and label it. Then wash your hands again. If someone's deaf and hard of hearing, there's a video that shows the best mask for them. And you're going to want to be able to test whether a mask is effective. So that's what this video is about. A hat that has a built-in face mask. And here's an article where over seven months, several cloth face masks were tested and they selected the 12 best ones. What are the best materials for making homemade masks? Another similar article that it's good to make sure that your homemade face mask is a combination of two fabrics. The effectiveness depends on the type of covering. Here are face masks made from air conditioning filters and even eggplant leather was used for sustainable face masks. One that I really like is the Nano Mask. There's even one that has silver in it. We have the N95 masks. They are super. They filter out 95% of particulate matter, but not directly antiviral. In airborne exposure from someone coughing or sneezing, the virus will be attached to a water molecule of some kind. They're a good standard for judging other masks they trap water molecules. That also means your own respiration will get trapped on the inside and that can make for a good host of both viruses and bacteria. So they need to be disposed of and not reused. In China, the people are allowed three of those masks a day. Instructions on how to make your own face masks and a face shield. So friends, that's a wrap on some of what you'll find on face masks and gloves in the Ultimate Herbal Database. Remember to sign up for it and to subscribe to the channel because next time we're going to cover the forbidden topic of vaccines. Thanks again for watching and please be sure and share. Bye-bye.